So we're jumping into some board gaming tactic here, and I'm going to illustrate some examples uh, looking at Runebound, looking at Descent 2nd Edition. If you've been following my channel, and I use those to illustrate, I love dungeon crawlers. I love dungeon crawlers because the synthesis of having a party, having a character, getting in there, exploring a dungeon, grabbing some loot, leveling up, fighting some minions, and having a, a boss encounter, hopefully a dragon, in a small, compact, quick play format. I, I love that. I love that. And especially from the perspective of magic items. I mean, who doesn't want a magic sword or having magic gear, magic armor, seeing your character level up? Looking at Runebound 2nd, excuse me, Runebound 3rd Edition. I also like 2nd. Looking at Runebound 3rd Edition, one of the unique features of this game to illustrate the tactica that we're talking about today, efficient use of magic items slash power-ups. As you adventure in the realm and you get gold, you can visit the cities and literally purchase magic items. And the combat activation system of Runebound has these these discs, these pogs, these runes, literally rune bound, that have symbols on them. And when it's your turn, you cast out, you flip them out on the table. The symbols that are up are your activation. You kind of use them to make attacks and have combos. Magic items literally give you another disc. So you get the magic sword. There's a little picture of the sword on it and maybe one damage and like a lightning flash rune, depending on which side. It's kind of fun because... The literal magic items that you buy expand your collection of runes that you can utilize. So the question is, when to use these, when to utilize these, or how to acquire them? Because the last thing we want to do is get to like the final boss fight, and you might be stacked. You might be just stacked with magic items. But because you've been saving them, you're really, really weak now for the boss fight in terms of uh, abilities or health, and you get killed. You don't want to get killed with your like loot sack full of magic items. We want to win the game. So from that perspective, generally speaking, um, I have to ask myself, acquisition of magic items, is it better to have one super powerful item or multiple small items. And the question to that depends on the rule set in terms of if we're utilizing, if it adds more dice, more abilities, or more of these runes. And again, we're looking at third edition rune bound, but you're going to port this over to your system. Generally speaking, the more dice, the more stuff you can cast, the more stuff you can roll, there's a chance of getting a legendary activation. There's a chance of getting some really good activations, right? If I roll a D6 and on a 6 I activate my superpower, I have a 1 in 6 chance of rolling that D6. But if I have magic items that add 2 or 3 or 4 more D6s to the pile, my chance of rolling that 6 just increased tremendously. So what we'll see in Runebound is we go through the game and a powerful magic item. You know, literally the runes are very powerful. They're like 12 or 13 gold. You fight a monster, the best you can do in theory is one a turn. You get two or three gold. You do a couple of side quests, you get two or three gold. You're going to burn a long time because you also have to heal up and have other consumables. You're going to burn a lot of game turns to get these powerful magic items. It's still only one rune. You might be better off looking at the rule set and saying, it's better if I have three or four magic items at two or three gold apiece. The powers might not be as big, but if I can add more of them up, then instead of casting one powerful rune that may or may not work, if I have three or four smaller magic items, that'll work. That'll give me that boost. This idea of quantity. We see this idea of dice mechanics. Generally speaking, the more dice that I can roll, the bigger the pool that it's going to be. So in looking at that, I'm not saying don't buy a powerful magic item. I'm saying look at the availability, look at what's going on, and make sure that you have enough of a mass as opposed to just one super powerful uber item. Although counter to that, foil to that is, it is pretty awesome to wield a powerful magic item. Now, second, looking at magic items, looking at the idea of the rule set, I'm going to jump to Talisman, another favorite board game of mine, both digital and analog. Love, love all the expansions, got to have all the corner boards. 
as you go through, you acquire magic items uh, randomly, depending on quests. You could jump into the city, which is a part of the game, and spend gold to buy potions and pets and arms and armor and spells. So there is kind of a shop. Um, the shop is random in that if you go in there, you spend gold, you draw one, two, or three cards, or you buy a specific item. What we see in this aspect is if you have gold or you have resources or you have power points to buy or craft magic items, pay attention to your other attributes. Pay attention, in the case of Talisman, if we're using that example, to your health. There are times you're going to take damage. So I start with um, I'm playing the warrior. I've got five health. I get down to three health. Now I might have a healing spell. There might be a, a fountain of life that I can drink from, event card. But I want to spend some gold to make sure my health is always at the highest. I spend that gold, I might not be able to buy those magic items or use those magic items. If I have a healing potion, you know, the classic question, when do you use the healing potion? Well, as soon as I take some damage, I use the healing potion. I want to make sure I'm always t uh, topped off. If I have five life and I get punked and I'm now down to three life or two life, and now the next encounter I face really hurts me, I could get killed. Or if I'm in combat, I'm playing Descent 2nd Edition, I've got some loot, when do I use that healing potion? As soon as I can. Because the Overlord, uh, being a dice-based game, they might roll the dice, just roll legendary, be able to trigger a lot of surges, and now instead of taking one damage, they have the monsters utilize the surges, I take three or four damage and I get killed. So we really, in a life-based game, we really want to make sure that we are always, always topped off. So I don't like to hold that healing potion. And if you disagree in the comments, I'd love to hear the Tactica, but I've been bitten too many times and died with, with tons of magic loot and gear strapped on. Whatever my life is, as soon as I take some damage, I want to heal up. I want to make sure I'm always, always topped off, topped up. So leading to the efficient use of magic items in a game. And again, we're just looking at a dungeon crawler perspective. This could be universal in terms of consumables. When do you do that and how do you do that?